And, uh, and it was, yeah, I mean, my first day on a movie set, I'm working with Spike Jones. I mean, my mind is blown. <laughs> my first time shooting a movie. I mean, where do I go from here? So, um, it was very cool. It was such a cool experience. The guys are so nice. And, um, they ended up taking me under their wing and, and I became part of the family. So. Fuck. <laughs> How has your life changed in the last couple of weeks? I'm definitely getting more stand up opportunities. So that's cool. Um, starting to headline and um, I get a bunch of really crazy, cool messages from people all over the world. A lot of really positive messages. Um, you know, it's, it's great hearing from young women and, um, and, and just the support and how they, they love seeing someone like them being represented on screen. You know, I'm not a girly girl. I'm very much a tomboy. Um, I like to kick it with the guys. And, um, and I think that there's a lot of girls out there like me, you know? Um, so I think it, 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 that to me felt really good knowing that, um, that there's women out there who feel like they can relate to someone they see on the screen. So that's fucking beautiful, man. Yeah. I see you're going to be in Brooklyn next Monday night at yeah, Union uh, Hall with friends. Yep, Union Hall, uh, April 18th. So if anyone wants to come out, it's going to be a good time. Um, I have my funny friends, um, you know. So Matt Edgar's in the house. Matt Edgar is, uh, yeah, he's he's a big support of mine um, since day one. So, yeah, it's going to be a good time. I can't tell you how proud I am. I, I really can't because... All these fucking people think that we go out there and, you know, it's hard work. It weighs on our emotion. You know, that audition, if you would have gone to the first screen test on Monday and they would have called you that night and said, you know what, we're just not going to go with girl. How heartbroken. That's what America doesn't understand. That's what people don't understand. Like, You're we lucky. get fucking so emotional. Like, our lives are so up and down. You're lucky if you'll get a call back telling them rejecting you. Sometimes they just won't even call you back and you just have to wonder, you know? So you're right. I mean, it, it, it definitely plays to your emotions. People think, um, some people think I just came out of nowhere and it's like, they don't see the other side where I'm sitting in mics every night, you know, I'm, I'm every day I'm writing. Um, I'm trying to get as much stage time in, in one single day. I'm hustling all over the city for five minutes. You know, I'm driving three hours to do 10 minutes. Like, it's, they don't see that side and you're right. And I think, um, like even when I first started stand up, uncle Joey, you were in the mics with me, you were at fourth wall, you would, you and Lee would drop in. And I was like, if uncle Joey's in a mic right now, there's no other place I should be. You know what I mean? And that was so inspiring for me. You know, man, you, uh, a, a long time ago, somebody came to me in 2011 and said, when you get back into it, make sure this time you, sh you help the young guys out. And you, not inspire, but just like let them know that what they're doing, it's what we fucking do. We starve. We get emotionally beat up. Our family hates us because we don't show up to no fucking uh, events anymore. You know, we go through this fucking thing for this little payoff because it's a little payoff that we get. But that little payoff keeps us alive once a year. Like I wasn't a greedy person, but if you called me for a TV show or a movie once a year, that made my dick get hard. <laughs> like I'm in okay you thought of me that's fucking great you know yeah exactly exactly I remember looking at your resume something uh maybe two years ago you had a podcast you were doing like 20 thousand you were like writing for somebody like a magazine for somebody 420 hemp or whatever it was uh, like articles or contributing editor so you worked it from like a lot of people going to LA and they go, you know, I want to do stand up. Then they start writing for a, a publication, weed time, whatever they get a promotion and stand up goes out the window, but you found what you wanted. You found yeah. what you wanted. I found love with stand up, and I always knew, okay, stand up's going to be a part of my life for the rest of my life. But what other strengths can I work on that will also help me with, Stand up. So is that writing? Yeah. Writing for magazines, tweeting every day, writing jokes, making memes, all of that feeds into what my ultimate goal is, is to become really good at stand up and performing and perfecting my craft. So I think 
you can't just be one thing anymore. Like you can't just do stand up. You know, you have to work your other tools, your other strengths. Like what other tricks do you have? You know? And, um, and I think that's like, that's just what you have to do in order to get your name in front of whoever's going to change your life next, you know? And the most important thing that you did that I really enjoyed is that you showed up every day. That's what people really don't realize. Somebody said to me, well, I'm starting a podcast. <clears throat> What's the most important thing? And I go, be consistent. You keep posting on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, and you post and people see it and they go, fuck him, fuck him. And then one day, all the wheels align. They go to YouTube to see Bill Burr. Bill Burr's podcast isn't up, but yours is ready. And now you got a new fan because the levels came together. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to attack it. Richard Pryor would have a, we, we're not living. Richard Pryor is the greatest in my world, Rodney. But Rodney and Richard Pryor were not going to go home at night and tweet. Do you know what I'm saying? Rodney and Richard Pryor wouldn't go home and put a picture that somebody gave him from, you know, at the store and put it on Facebook before they go to bed. It was a different world then. They focused on stand-up. Now, we want to hear your stand-up, and we like it, but we want to know more about you. We want to mm -hmm. know if you shave your legs. We want to know if you <laughs> fucking brush your teeth every day. We want to know if your father was a bum. They want to know whether good or bad. They want to know so much about you, and it just adds to who you are as a stand-up. So what you were doing all those years when I was watching your feed was building. And that's why I tell people, like, you know, start, do it for a year, but don't quit on the year because that day, the next day was the day they were going to fucking pay attention to you. You quit before the miracle happened. Don't quit. Just keep doing it. There's nothing going on. Joey, I keep doing this. I keep doing spots and I get nowhere. Go 90 more days. And people would come back to me and go, you're not going to believe what happened. I got an audition for a commercial and I booked it. You were right. I, listen, when you get that close, it's like when you get a bunch of callbacks. You're going to go into that realm pretty soon. <laughs> That's a horrible realm of going for big stuff and getting like f four callbacks in a row and not getting the thing. Oh, that drives you crazy. And like they shopped you for three weeks, but then they ended up with an Asian girl. And you're like, where'd that come from? <laughs> they had me in there with everybody. And all of a sudden they come up with an Asian girl or an ethnic or an Indian girl. You don't know. It's it's. But when you go for shows or TV or movies and you go, f you got four or five callbacks with disappointment, my man, you're ready for something big. Something big is going to come your way. If you last, if you didn't tip the scale and go see a therapist and cry under a fucking rock, you're going to be fine. And that's yeah. what happens. I think people give up before the miracle happens sometimes. 